I'm Janet Chisholm, Associate Pastor at Salem Presbyterian Church, and I would like to share an Easter story with you. It is called The Flowering Cross by Beth Ryan, illustrated by Renee Grafe, and it is published by Tommy Nelson. A bright ray of sunshine peeked between the curtains and shone right on Katie's face. Outside, the birds sang a cheery wake-up song. Katie's eyes popped open, and she sat straight up in bed as she remembered this was a special day. It's Easter, she said to the birds in the sun and to her puppy, Waggles. Katie, Mommy called out from the kitchen. Hurry and get your bath so you can go to Papa Jack's to pick your Easter flowers. Katie threw back the covers and leaped out of bed, leaving Waggles in his favorite spot. Papa Jack was their next door neighbor. He grew the most beautiful flowers in town, and today Katie would pick his prettiest flowers for the flowering of the cross. Katie was one of the few who dared to step foot in Papa Jack's garden. All around town, he was called Mean Old Jack, better known for his ill temper than his beautiful flowers. Balls and kites that landed in his yard were abandoned because no one was brave enough to retrieve them from his yard. Katie's mommy said their grouchy neighbor just needed an extra dose of kindness and love. So whenever she made homemade pies, she took one to him. When a big storm blew limbs over in his yard, Nolan, Katie's eight-year-old big brother, whom Katie called No-No, and their daddy helped pick them up. When Mr. Jack was sick, mommy was there with hot soup. Each time Katie went too, bringing her bright smiles and pictures of flowers to share. Even mean old Jack couldn't resist such kindness for long. Soon, Katie and No-No were welcome visitors to his garden, and mean old Jack became Papa Jack to them. Katie pulled back the shower curtain and let out such a squeal of happy delight that Waggles ran to see what had caused all the fuss. There, hidden in the bathtub, was the prettiest Easter basket ever. Katie carefully examined each treasure in her basket, but she quickly forgot about the candy and the pretty cross necklace when a pink Bible caught her eye. It was her first big girl Bible, and she would take it to church along with Papa Jack's flowers. And maybe, just maybe, this would be the day Papa Jack would go too. Mommy often invited Papa Jack to go to church with them, and Katie had done the same, but he never went to church, not even on Easter Sunday. At his first answer, at first, his answer had been a gruff, no. The next time it was simply, not today. And then more recently, it was a thoughtful, perhaps next time. When Katie reached Papa Jack's house, she knocked softly on the door. Good morning, Katie. You look like one of my prized spring daffodils, he said. But what Papa Jack said next was a big surprise. Katie, today I'm going to church with you. When she heard this, Katie was so happy, she almost forgot the flowers she'd come to pick. You may select any flowers you like, Papa Jack said, spreading his arms wide to indicate anything in his garden. Katie chose pretty pink tulips and bright yellow daffodils. Mommy, Daddy, and No-No were already in the car, but Katie and Papa Jack decided to walk the two blocks to church. On the way, Katie began to tell him all about the flowering of the cross. Jesus is God's son, she told Papa Jack, but some people nailed him to a cross. He died so that we could go to heaven with him one day. Then Katie explained, Jesus' friends buried him in a tomb but God made him come back to life again. Mommy says, Jesus loves me so much that he died for me, Katie said. And when I put flowers on the cross, it's a way of saying thank you to Jesus for all that he has done for me. Papa Jack, aren't you glad Jesus loves you? Katie waited for his answer, but Papa Jack was silent. 
Here, Katie said, offering him a pink tulip. You can put one on the cross too. Papa Jack took the flower in his rough hand and looked away before Katie could see the tear that slid down his cheek. During the service, the pastor shared how much God loves us, and Papa Jack thought of all the kindness Katie and her family had shown him, even when he didn't deserve it. Now he knew God's love was even greater than that. When the pastor finished speaking, it was time for all the children to go forward for the flowering of the cross. Katie gently took Papa Jack's rough hand in hers and led him straight to the cross. Katie placed her flower near the bottom of the cross while Papa Jack placed his at the top. Seeing this, Katie quickly pulled her flower out and whispered, pick me up so I can put mine next to yours. Papa Jack's heart was filled with love for the first time, love for a little girl and for the savior that she had shown him. As he lifted Katie up to her place to place her flower next to his, Katie exclaimed, thank you, Jesus. Amen, boomed the voice of Papa Jack as he joined in Katie's praise to Jesus. Papa Jack, please come to our house for Easter dinner, Katie begged on the way back home. Then we can go and fly my new kite, chimed in Nono. I would like that, Papa Jack answered. But first I need to stop by my wood shop for a bit. Later at home, when Nono saw Papa Jack heading to the wood shop, he was right behind him. While Katie got to help Papa Jack in the flower garden, Nono was always at his side in the wood shop. Katie peered out the window, waiting for Nono and Papa Jack. At last, she saw them coming and ran to meet them at the door, wondering what Nono carried in his hands. Look what we made, Nono proudly said. It's a flowering cross without the flowers. And it did look just like the cross at church, only smaller. No knows right, said Papa Jack. We need some flowers for it. Let's, uh, let's go see what we can find. Some of the other children playing from the neighborhood were playing outside. Come pick some flowers, Papa Jack invited. At first, the children eyed him suspiciously, but his broad smile and Katie's and Nono's welcoming waves soon won them over. No one knew at the time, but this was the beginning of what would become a neighborhood tradition, Easter flower picking in Papa Jack's beautiful garden. Easter dinner with Katie and her family was another tradition that Papa Jack looked forward to for years to come. And every year, the flowering cross stood in the center of the table, covered with his most spectacular flowers. For Papa Jack, it would always be a beautiful reminder of how a little girl led him right to the cross and Jesus' amazing love. This book even contains instructions on how to make your own flowering cross. And so I would encourage you as a family to pick some flowers, to place them on the cross, or maybe to draw a picture of a cross with flowers on it, but somehow remember the beauty and the love of what Christ did for us, and that that cross is empty on Easter. Christ has risen, alleluia. He has risen indeed.